Hey guys and girls, it's Ken and Jeannie here and today we have a property tour video for you. We're on our way to Guarda in Gouveia, which is in central Portugal. We're going to go and look at a five bedroom house with four bathrooms and the land size is 1.2 hectares. It also has a stream, so it sounds pretty cool. But first of all, I just wanted to say that if any of you are at home but you want to buy a property in Portugal and you can't quite make it out here in person, you can commission us to go in your place and to create one of these in-depth virtual tours. Send us an email on okportugal at hotmail.com and uh, let us know which property you'd like us to film and we can give you a quote. Anyway, let's get back on track. We're going to go to the property now and we're going to go and check it out, so come along with us. We've arrived at the property. We're going to go inside first, have a look around, and then I'll show you outside the property. So as you can see, it's very attractive from the front here. Uh, we've got beautiful granite stones, uh, really nicely pointed in. The roof looks like it's in really good condition. We have a beautiful wraparound balcony on this side and a little Juliet balcony on that side. And uh, over here we have a carport. Now I am going to show you the rest of that soon. But first of all, I want to take you to the inside and show you what's going on. We have this outdoor sort of seating area here with a little barbecue on this side. Uh, Hey guys, okay. thank you for letting me have a look around here. Uh, there's, well, here's the owners. We got Gina and we got Armin. And uh, yeah, I'm going to get out of your way and film the inside of your beautiful house. Okay. <laughs> right, so as you can see, we have a really nice big glass door, double glazed. And this takes us into the main sort of living area of the house. So we have a seating area over here, dining area on this side, and a really nice big kitchen on this side. The dimensions of this room are 6.537 meters by 8.527 meters. So it's a really nice big space. They've got these recessed lights going all the way through. And uh, I think I'm going to start on this side of the room. So a really nice looking kitchen, microwave. We've got the oven over here, five burner gas hob. Um, it's really nicely done. I like the fact that there's this low wall so you can still see into the lounge, but when you're in the lounge, you can't see any of the mess or clutter while you're cooking and stuff like that. And we've got these really big drawers on this side. Plenty of space to prepare food. And what I really like here as well is they've got three different sinks. So it's very easy to wash really big items and also to you know rinse and dry and stuff like that. Now, if you don't want to wash up, there is a dishwasher on this side and a nice big stainless steel fridge or stainless steel design fridge with a little water dispenser on this side. It's a very nice kitchen. Now, if I look on this side, we have lots of storage. So we just walked in the front door here and this entire wall here is just made up of storage. We also have another little uh, storage area just on this side here where you can keep a whole bunch of stuff out of sight. Now, the lounge obviously extends all the way in this direction. It goes upstairs, it goes all the way through there, there's a bathroom. But before we go there, I just want to take you through to the side of the house. Now, these doors over here, again, are double glazed. Everything's double glazed and aluminium. Uh, we can start to see some of the old granite stones of the building. And the owner bought this place 15 years ago. And he said that before, he actually used this as extra rooms and extra storage rooms and things like that. Uh, he said that at one stage he had a bathroom that was actually built into this corner. And these two were being used almost like hostel um, type accommodation. So as you come in here, really nice big space. You can see the old original walls again. Let me stand in this corner and give you a better look at that. This room is 4.529 meters by 2.952 meters. So it's a pretty decent space. Now I would say you could easily make this into other rooms. You could also use it as like an office or something like that. It's kind of like its own little annex space. And over here we have another room. And as you can see, it was used as some kind of a bedroom or something like that. This room is 2.783 meters by 2.866 meters. And over here, what is that? Oh, okay, it's a mirror. I just saw these little bars. So it's kind of like old stone with, with some bars on and it's got a mirror in the background. I almost thought that that was kind of a window or something. Okay, so let's work our way around, back into the lounge again, or into the living room. And uh, as you can see here, there's plenty of space for a whole bunch of different sofas. It's really nice. We've got some windows that are, well, look out. I actually haven't shown you that view yet. But as you can see here, you've got a stunning view of all of these trees and the river. 
So really, really nice. Looking back in this direction, this is kind of like their main sort of sitting area and where they watch TV and stuff like that. And I would say a really good feature is this fireplace. Now I was talking to the owner and he said that this fire basically heats up the entire house. It's got this big stainless steel pipe uh, or chimney that goes all the way through the room and you get maximum heat coming out of this and it spreads across the whole ceiling of the room. And then this goes upstairs and into the upstairs bedroom. So it actually heats upstairs and downstairs, which is pretty cool. Now, if we go in this direction, we got two steps and this takes us into the downstairs bathroom. And well, I should say the downstairs shower room. So we've got a shower in here, a nice walk-in shower, almost like a wet room. And uh, there's the plug on the floor. You don't have to have any shower rails or anything like that. This should keep most of the water out and it should sink all the way down there. We've got the vanity unit on this side. And over here we have a toilet. And as you can see here, we've got a little window to the outside to bring some fresh air in. So this is the view from the bathroom, looking back out to the living room. Now before we venture upstairs and go and check out what's going on up there, I want to take you downstairs and around so we can finish the bottom floor. Again, we've got a really big, big and wide door here. Let me give you some dimensions on these doors because they're amazing. So this door is 1.2 meters wide by just over two meters tall. So really nice. I mean, you'll be able to get like huge furniture and stuff like that through there. Okay, so if we go in this direction, we've got a little, a little door or a little storeroom underneath the stairs and a great place to put like your vacuum cleaner and stuff like that. And they got like some shoes back there. And then we go into this space. Let me turn on my torch for this because it looks a little bit dark. I'm not sure where, where the light switches are on this one. So we've got double glazing. It looks like they've got a big chest freezer in here for storing extra stuff. A whole bunch of shelving units. Now this basically takes us to um, a bathroom area over here with a very big shower again. And uh, we've got a toilet in here and we have a basin. So I mean, this is like a, well, like a fully functioning bathroom. Uh, and then as we go through in this direction, we've got a room that they're currently using for storage. But this again is another room that could be used as a bedroom or something like that with the bathroom next door. We've got some absolutely stunning views looking out over the gardens and then in the distance where that big tree line is, is a river. And this river or this property borders that river. Let me give you some dimensions on this room. It's 2.751 by 3.502 meters. It does have a slightly strange shape as in it's not entirely square as you can see by the shape on the ceiling here. But those are the rough dimensions. And then when we go through this way, there's another room that's currently being used for storage and the owner storing tools and things like that in here. So it's a bit of a mess, but um, as you can see, it's got a lot of potential to be another bedroom even. This room is a similar size at 3.077 meters by 3.164. Okay, and then there's something else that I can show you on this side here. You've got access to a little outdoor kitchen area. This is all being tiled off. Um, you can see that they've got running water out here. They also have some hot water out here. Some very basic sort of storage. Um, the roof itself looks like it's in really good condition. And uh, yeah, quite a pleasant little area. Let me go and stand in the other corner here and give you some other looks of this place. So the door that we've just walked through. And now this looks out onto the garden. Now, the border of the property is actually this wall over here. But I'm going to show you a map and I'm going to show you exactly where we're standing in relation to the property and where all the borders and boundaries are. This is essentially like a space. Um, it's got like a public little foot track up there. And the owner was saying that, you know, once every week or so, you might get a couple of walkers or something that walk past. Um, but this is the only area that they could really see. He also mentioned that this is a very cool area. So, you know, this is basically in the, the shade and in the summer, this is the coolest place that you can have next to the house. Now we're not going to walk outside here just yet because uh, I'm going to show you the outside of the property a little bit later. So let's go back inside. Let's go upstairs and see the rest of this place. 
So I like the fact that they have all these big doors that, that are insulated and that in the winter, when you're trying to keep all of the warmth in, you can close all of these doors and you can make the spaces that you heat a lot smaller. As you can see, these walls look amazing, all pointed up. And yeah, it's a very nice staircase going up. Some steel balustrades. And this takes us up to a really nice landing area. So I'm going to stand over here and just give you a look at it. The landing area is 3.837 meters by 2.851 meters. So this basically leads to a bedroom over here. We have a laundry area, which is just in here, another bedroom in here, and behind me, another bedroom. So I think what we should do, let's start with this bedroom on this corner here. As you can see, they've managed to fit two single beds in here, a little computer, so it's like a nice little office room. Very nice. Now this is the roof over that outdoor kitchen area. And as you can see, here's that little footpath going past. But you can see it's not really suitable for cars and uh, it's not going to have very much traffic at all. This room is 3.286 meters by 3.678 meters. So a really nice shape. Um, you can also see that the roof goes up here. So it's like an apex roof. So you've got a lot of ceiling height in that corner. On this side of the room, you can see you've also got some wardrobe space and some storage. They've got some shelves in there. It's kind of an open plan storage, but you could easily put some kind of a door on there or some kind of a curtain or something like that. And as we go through here, they've got a laundry area and that's hidden in this sort of cupboard space over here. So you can do your washing and your drying and stuff like that. Now, obviously this is a lived in house. I don't really want to be looking through everyone's cupboards and things like that. So I'm just going to give you a rough idea of what there is here. And again, here's this big apex roof. Very, very nice. This is a door to the balcony, the wraparound balcony. But before we go through there, let's go and check out these bedrooms. This is the master bedroom. And as you go through immediately, you can see these beautiful big windows. I love the way that they open at the top just to let a little bit of air through, a little bit of airflow, and these beautiful granite walls. So we've got a lot of these windows. Well, we've got two big windows and we have a door going out to this wraparound balcony with all of those views. And here we can see the main bedroom. The master bedroom is 6.830 meters by 5.957. So we've got some storage here behind the curtains. And look at this bed with this beautiful woodwork. It looks like it's a king size bed. Or, sorry, a queen size bed. And uh, so a really nice big bed. And then on this side of the room, they've got a lot of storage. Now, I remember earlier when we were in the living room and I said there was a chimney going through. So he was saying that if in the middle of winter, when it's at the coldest, in four hours, you can heat up the whole house just using that fire. So that's pretty awesome. And as we walk our way through this way, we basically get to the bathroom. So we've got a beautiful big bathtub in there. Uh, we have a lovely big open shower in here, so look at that, a huge space. And all of the water just drains into here, so it's a wet room. And a really nice big tub for soaking away. We've got the loo tucked away into the corner, so it's nice and private. And on this side over here, we have the vanity unit. And I really like how they've done this vanity unit with this old sort of like carved reclaimed wood. And they've used like little um, little tap handles. So that's pretty cool. So really nice bathroom. Also another thing I quite like, I'm not sure if these are stone, but they feel like stone and they've got a nice, um, a nice texture. So you're not going to be slipping. And then again on this side we've got all of the storage. Now obviously I'm not going to be opening up anyone's cupboards or anything like that, but you can imagine just how much stuff you can fit in there. And uh, I think the wind slammed that for a second. Let's go back out here. I think I'm just gonna shut this behind me so it doesn't slam again. All right, we've got another bedroom. This bedroom is 6.502 meters by 5.417 meters. So a really big space. Again, we've got this big apex ceiling over here. And we've got this room divider, so you can barely see over, you can just see to the tops, but it makes the rest of the room private. And as we walk through here, 
we can see that there's a really nice bathroom, big bathtub, nice big vanity unit and sink. And uh, let me just stand on this side of the room so I can show you a little bit better. So the toilet down here, nice full size bathtub. It's quite an interesting bathtub. I like that shape at the back there so you can really lounge in it. And then we have another one of these big walk-in showers with like a wet room floor. Very, very nice. This bathroom is 3.930 meters by 2.163 meters. It's a really nice big space. Okay, so now we can see the rest of this room. We've got two singles here that could be pushed together to make a big sort of super king or king. And uh, we've got some amazing views out of, these, out of these windows and out of these doors. Let me just go and stand on this side quickly and give you an idea. In the background, we can see the Cerro de Estrella just up there. And again, through here, but the curtains are shut, or more of the mountain views. So really, really spectacular. And then when we look in this direction, we've got a lovely wood-burning stove. Again, a lot of exposed stainless steel. So this will be very effective in the winter. The more of this metal that's exposed on the, on the chimney, the more that'll come into this room and heat it up really nicely. And we have this Juliet balcony. It's like a little mini balcony that you can open up and you can stand out here and you can see all the way along the property. You can actually see the other balcony just here. This tree line here is where the river is. And actually I can kind of point it out to you now. Um, the property starts there, goes all the way along this tree line, comes all the way back to here where this plowed area is or where the plowed area ends and then tucks up here. So that's one hectare of big open field and then you've got about another 200 square meters around the house here. So as we walk through to this area, we've got a lovely little seating area. We've also got this space here, which is almost like a little office desk with a TV screen. Now the owner said that this was originally set up as a little kitchenette. So it had a kitchenette here, it's all plumbed in and everything for water and stuff like that. And then obviously you've got a seating area, a little dining area. And uh, let's just stand on this side over here and give you a look at the rest of the room. In the background there, that's the bathroom lovely high ceilings. And then we look out through these doors over here to the little Juliet balcony. And out these windows, where again, you just get these beautiful, beautiful views. So there's one last thing that I have to show you. Upstairs here is this beautiful wraparound balcony. Check this out. So through these insulated aluminum doors, you come out onto an enormous balcony space. Absolutely amazing. And now you can get some really expansive views of everything around you. The Cerro de Estrella Mountains up there, stretching off into the distance back there. And just have a look at all of the trees and the greenery. Stunning. So this property is up for sale with Mountain Home Immobilaria. We've got their phone number up there. Obviously I'm gonna be putting all of this inside the description of the video. So make sure you contact them, send them an email if you're interested in buying this place. So the main part of the house is done. It's time to go outside and show you what the outside parts of this property has to offer. This is the street access to the property. As you can see, we have a tarred road over here and we have two entrances. This one runs right up to the house and this one over here goes into the one hectare field just in front of the house. On this side over here where these big trees are, there's a lovely river that basically runs along the edge of the property. And from the tarred road over here, you can start to get a little glimpse of this beautiful little river. And all the way on this side over here, this all belongs to the property. Now we'll get there in a bit, but first of all, I just wanted to show you what the driveway is like and what the access to the property is like. So on the front here, we have a post box, which is pretty handy. Our post box is all the way in the village. So you can actually receive mail here. Now this is the bottom field. And uh, as you can see, some of the area here is ploughed. I believe they're going to be planting some corn. Um, then you've got this beautiful old stone wall. And this basically divides the two entrances. This is the main entrance that takes you right up to the house. And then we have this lovely old stone wall over here. So I'm just going to walk up to the main house. And uh, I just wanted to mention that this house has got mains electricity. Um, it's got a septic tank for sewage. And it also does have a phone line. But there's also very good 4G internet access here. So if you find that on the phone line, the ADSL isn't as fast as you like, 
you can also get 4G internet access and that's up to 150 megabits per second. Now the exact speed that you'll get will depend on the local sort of tower in the area but uh, we're getting about 70 megabits per second download speed um, in our house using 4G and a router that basically puts Wi-Fi out throughout our house. So you can get pretty decent speeds. So it's a very nice driveway. Uh, it's not your own private driveway as you have in this field over here where you've got that little truck running through. Um, but you're not going to have very much traffic on here because there's only one other property that could potentially use this driveway. And that is this one just over here. Now by the looks of it, there's a very old sort of agricultural house there. It doesn't look like it's been renovated to live in or anything like that. But it does look like they do cultivate the olives and things. So you'll probably find that there's a farmer that comes down here, takes care of his property. And uh, by the looks of it, that's the only other person that's really going to be using it. There also is a very basic little footpath along here. You might be able to get, I don't know, a four by four up there, but it seems quite narrow. And obviously being a public track, it is, it is possible for people to walk across there. But according to the owner, there's very little people that actually do that. You know, it's very few people. So looking back, that's where we've come from. This is that big one hectare piece. And now we go to the front gates of the farm. So we've got some lovely iron gates. Um, you can see that it looks like they stay open. And um, we can start to see the gardens and all of the trees and things like that. Now the first thing that you will notice here that there are electricity pylons. Now we, these aren't the very big ones. Um, these aren't like the big transmission line ones. Um, they are a fair distance away from the house, but obviously I like to point these things out. We've got pylons like this in our bottom field and you don't hear any of that electrical buzzing noise or anything like that. I think there's very minimal electromagnetic um, sort of energy coming off this one because you can't hear that sort of dzz, you know, buzzing noise like on those big ones. Now we've got a well which is behind all of this ivy and uh, I can't actually see into it but when the estate agent has visited before um, she managed to have a peek in there and apparently there's lots of water in there. We are in Gavea near the Cerro de Estrella mountains. Water should not be an issue especially not for wells. And I'm just hearing in the distance there's a faint sound of some church bells just from the local village just back there. A really nice sound. Okay, so let's walk through. Um, now at the moment we've got a lot of cars parked here. Obviously we've got the estate agent's car, we've got our car, the owner's cars. Um, but this is like the outdoor sort of garden area. It's been really beautifully planted up with lots of shrubs and bushes and hedges and things like that. We've got lots of olive trees dotted about and lots of plants that I don't really know the name of. So let me show you this side of the house because we haven't seen this yet. This is where the wraparound balcony goes around the corner and uh, almost like an outside preparation area or something like that. Now the owner said that they don't really use this area very much because they've got so many other areas. But I thought I'd point it out. So as we walk around here we've got the main sort of lawned area of the garden and uh, as you can see, you, you're able to actually keep it nice and green, even in the summertime. Some lovely olive trees around here. And a nice seating area. And now we can start to see a little bit more of the outside of the property. We can see the little Juliet balcony where we were. And then we've got some lovely sort of coniferous trees just over here. That's a really nice garden space area. I think one of my favorite things over here is this big willow tree and these lovely big olives. So when we first started the video we walked through the house at the bottom and it took us to this outdoor kitchen area. So let me go around, around there and I can show you just how you can access that. These are the sliding doors to those two downstairs rooms that, that are being used for storage. And this is the little area which is used as the outdoor kitchen area. So it looks like this is like a herb garden, 
perhaps a vegetable garden or something at some stage. We've got some strawberries in there, We've got some citrus trees. It's all very nice. Now there's also a big fruit tree section and I'll show you that now. So as we go through, we've got a little pond. And when the owner was showing me around, there was some lovely wildlife in there. There was a completely harmless water snake. Um, they actually don't bite here in Portugal. The water snakes are completely harmless. They, they only eat aquatic life like tadpoles and fish and things like that. But where the water from this pond comes from is in the background here. It's called a water mine. So there's water coming out of the ground like a spring through some rocks and that's just filtering out into here and keeping this nice and wet for all the wildlife. Now as we go in this direction we've got a, a big old stone building. It's got some stone walls and they've made some sort of outdoor um, storage areas out of it. Let's see if I can turn on a light here and see if I can show you a little bit more. So these would be absolutely perfect for like keeping animals in or storing tools. Lots and lots of space. Um, it's actually quite nice and cool in here. It's got a very thick uh, concrete ceiling, like thick, thick poured concrete. Um, and uh, yeah, it's got electricity down here by the looks of it as well. We've got some bulbs, just like workshop space and things like that. Now this could be a really good area for like keeping animals. I mean, you could keep like horses in here perhaps or something like that. And this is a really big space, this one. Huh. Right, and then this takes us into a little orchard. I'll see if I can remember what's in here. We've got some pomegranates, we've got some plums, we've got almond trees. They're all quite mature as well. We've got apples, we've got I've already said plums. I believe those are apricots up there. I think he said something about nectarines. And that one over there looks like a walnut tree, a very young walnut tree. So we've got a lot of like fruit and nut trees. Um, we've got some grapevines all growing along here. He said that they haven't been cultivated. They don't make that many grapes for making wine, but you get enough that you can eat some grapes. And then when I walk just to the edge here, I want to point out that this now is the border, the boundary of the property. So this line going all the way down to where the river is. Now we can see the river, it's in those thick tree line over there. And that runs all the way back to the road where we walked in. And if we turn around, it's, this is the border running up to this stone wall, which goes behind all these buildings, behind the house and all the way up to the entrance again. So we've just walked from this fruit orchard just over here. We've got the little water mine section. And now there's some stairs that basically take us down to this bottom field. This is where this lovely big willow tree is. Uh, we've got some, I believe these are yuccas on the side. It looks like quite a short one, but really nice and healthy. And look at these big stone steps. And now these basically take us down to this bottom field. Now, over here we've got like an animal pen. So this has been enclosed um, they had a, a dog, it was basically a stray dog that arrived and when it first arrived they wanted to give it a pen so that it wouldn't escape. Um, but now the dog isn't using it anymore so this space could obviously be taken down. It's very nice and high. I would say that you could actually use this for goats and stuff like that. And of course you've got shade, so you've got the willow tree for shade and it's actually quite a nice big area so perhaps you could keep some livestock out here. Which will be a nice use of the space. If we look in this direction We've got a big open field. Now the owner says that he has an arrangement very similar to what I have in my farm, where one of the neighbors um, has sheep and he lets his sheep graze on this field. So that's excellent. It means that he basically looks after and maintains this field for the owners. And uh, I'm sure that that's an arrangement that they would like to have going forward. So if you wanted to buy this place, but you didn't really want to look after one hectare of grass and plant crops and things like that, uh, or if you just for a few years didn't want the responsibility of that, this is a good way of getting into farming and owning a big piece of land, having a neighbor who's going to help you and help you look after it. I'm just looking back up at the house. We've walked all the way from there. And this is that little road. When we were at the front of the property, there were two entrances. So that takes you all the way down. And now we've got a section that's been plowed. Now the guy who's looking after the field, he's just been here recently. He's plowed this up. He's going to plant some corn here. And they like to plant corn in the summer because it grows with very, very little water. Now the owner told me that the corn that grows in this field 
doesn't need any irrigation to actually grow full-on corn cobs, which is pretty amazing. That means that there's lots of water in the soil. Basically, this soil is on the edge of a riverbank. And so just below the surface, there's lots and lots of water. Now the owner was showing me earlier, he did a little bit of digging and you can see it's all dark and damp and actually very cool under there. So really nice soil, great for growing stuff. Here is access to the river and look how amazing this is. You go down one step and here we go. My favorite part, absolutely incredible. There's a bit of a, a walkway along the whole front of this river and uh, while you're walking along, you, you catch glimpses of frogs and fish. It's really, really pretty. I'm not sure exactly how deep it is, but sort of lurking in the center here, it looks to be about half a meter deep. So perfect for splashing around in the water, but not quite enough for swimming. Now I've heard that in that direction, if you were to walk about another 200 meters along the riverbank, um, there's a section that's about two meters deep with a cascade, which sounds absolutely amazing, but that's not actually on this property. Over here we have a plant that the owner told me comes from South America. Um, some friends of theirs brought it across and planted it here and every year it comes up. In the winter it dies back, but in the summer it grows these enormous leaves and it looks pretty awesome. So yeah, let's just walk a little bit further along this riverbank just so I can give you a few more views. I've heard that in the winter time the water can actually reach all the way up to the top here along this stone wall. And he said on occasional years the water's actually just splashed over the wall slightly when it's really, really, really stormy. So that's pretty cool. This is basically here to protect the property and to protect the land. Um, but obviously, as you look through this field and up towards the house, you've got a whole other terrace up there. The house is a lot higher than the river. That's obviously something to take into consideration. If you want a river, you want to make sure that your house is protected. Now the owner's been here for 15 years. They've never had a problem with that. And he's only ever seen the water just come slightly over the wall. Wow, I'm seeing some fish. I really hope the camera picked that up, but we had two fish swimming past here, probably about 15 to 20 centimeters long. Really, really pretty. I can imagine if I had some, some boots on today, some waterproof boots like Wellington's, I would, could take a walk up here and it would be absolutely stunning. So we're just climbing up from the river the same way that we came down. There's a little bit of a gap in the stone wall that allows you to come in and out. And when we look in this direction, there's an absolutely enormous cherry tree, really, really, really big one. And underneath the shade of the cherry tree is a lovely outdoor barbecue or braai area. And they've got beautiful little stone seats. I really like that. And over here on this side, a big old oil drum barrel braai. In fact, I'm not sure if that's an oil drum. It looks more like a gas bottle or a pressure, pressure bottle. But you can see that's a really nice braai. And you've got a little rotisserie attachment there. I can imagine you can make some awesome food out here. So this property has a braai, a really nice braai spot, a nice spot for being outside and cooking, which if you watch my channel or not, you'll know that I love doing that. It's got a little river, which if you know on my channel, I'd absolutely love one of those. So that was a lot of fun. As you know, I really love looking around all these properties here. I love doing in-depth reviews on them, showing people everything that they have to offer and uh, having a look around myself, you know. I really enjoyed looking around this place. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Let us know in the comments below and uh, if you want any information on this property, please get hold of the estate agent, Hermione. She's absolutely awesome and she's going to be able to answer any questions that you have.